Hey ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Pastiche of Skin. Today we are doing a cold open on Neon Chrome from Tanton Games. So yeah, Neon Chrome. I saw little bits of video of this. It's a kind of a top-down-esque uh, shooter slash uh, roguelike slash uh, cyberpunk have you ever played Loaded on the original PlayStation um, or any of the kind of like tw twin stick top down shooters? It's weird, man. So essentially in this, you have your hacker character here who logs into an immersion chair. And he, whenever he logs into the immersion chair, he takes control of an agent. And each of the agents are like in cryogenic stasis that you can use. And the whole premise is that you have to work your way up the cyberpunk Blade Runner-esque tower. And you can buy stats boosts for each of your characters as you go along, or go in and set up your weapon loadouts and abilities and enhancements prepaid before you even start. So, yeah, it kind of feels like a mix of the very simple violence of, uh, what's not my Miami Vice, what's the uh, Hotline Miami, and a little bit of Smash TV. By way of, I don't know, maybe even Invisible Ink. Because you're essentially doing an infiltration thing, but you're just all about murdering everything. And you have to actually like do certain amounts to unlock each of these sections here. So yeah, um, assets used, playtime 36 minutes, items unlocked too. So I, I, there's things that you unlock along the way. Like how many warehouses, residential, medical. So let's jump in and just try grab an agent and give it a try. So we got a techie, a cyber psycho, or a corporate soldier. You can see each one of them have their own uh, energy and, and HP slots and weapon slots to work with. So that corporate soldier has a bullet, first rifle, laser pulse. I like the laser pulse as a, um, an attack. And uh, carries a shield which decreases frontal damage by 25. Chooses from four enhancements instead of three. Oh, I'm... Going to go with the melee enhancement because I actually do find myself kind of getting trapped in by a lot of things in melee. So yeah, you use left stick to move, right stick to target, and R trigger to shoot. Now, um, I obviously always have a busted ass trigger on these goddamn controllers. I really need to get new controllers for playing these because um, it makes me shoot until my clip's empty. I mean, it's like the R2 jams on it. So yeah, obviously, uh, study the burn marks of laser buyers on the floor. They indicate the laser's path. Ready to continue and jump into floor one of Neon Chrome. So as obviously, whenever you do floor after floor, you start to build up um, more and more uh, skills, stats, and equipment. And you kind of get used to having to chase down or avoid certain kinds of enemies. Like these little uh, turrets that show up. Whoa. See, they're easy enough to take out. Yeah, got that explosion. Uh, must be a hacker to be able to open that. So, specific classes will actually have different skills and different things they can open. Whoa! Okay, Spider-Bot. You want to cause trouble? Okay. Um, It's really... It's one of the things where it's hard to concentrate on playing this. And... Sh whoa. Ah, took a hit there. So, a lot of the walls and stuff... Oh, so I've actually run into a mercenary. So, I'm just going to show, like, the destructible terrain, what happens with it. So, objects actually blow up whenever you actually set them on fire and uh, prepare them, like, uh, energy coils and stuff. Which can be really, really super useful uh, for taking out large rooms of enemies. Like, things that are purposely getting in your way. So that Keymaster is obviously a little bit harder to take down than anybody else. Oh, you dickbag. There we go. So I know I got the red key to work with. Let me get in through different doors. Um, let's just turn down that audio a tiny bit because the soundtrack is awesome and all, but I'm just worried about it being a, a little bit too identifiable for um, Content ID. Um, there we go. Die, Spider-Bot! Die, you fucking merc. Uh, we'll loot that. And sh I can't shoot you through the wall. Boom. <laughs> you shouldn't have looked. 
Oh, that was not a good move. Oh, die, dude. Eh, I got him. Did that guy just go to investigate somewhere else? Oh, shit, that was written to reload. Oh, I'm so close to dying already. <laughs> ah. Well, at least I managed to take out enough of them. Whoa, that guy is not dead. So, that was floor one completed. Well, actually, while I've got the key now, I might as well go and take a look at that second room. So there might actually be a weapon upgrade or a bonus or an enhancement of some sort that I can take before I get on to the next floor, which might recover my health. Is there anything? Yes, there is an enhancement in there. So the enhance way enhancements work is that there is a... Um, pod that you jump into, activate it, and it gives you an option of one or four. Uh, personal guard is zap three and three nearby hostiles with bolts of electricity, so three enemies nearby will all make get killed. Nanites wave in, give you more health. Uh, hack the chamber to set a shutdown signal, okay, and you get three small sub munitions whenever you use uh, explosives. So, uh, that gives me 50% increase to health, but that is, I, I do like the personal guard thing, because essentially anything gets near me, I can imme it immediately start pumping the electricity into them, so it makes me feel safer. Oh, drop by the wall, grab that, loot myself up, get a little bit more money, and on to the next spot. So the floors are randomly generated and procedurally generated every time that you run into them. Uh, you won't get the exact same kind of layout over and over again. It feels, it is a roguelike in that way. Um... Level 1 completed in 2.22 seconds. I could have done a lot better than that. So we're on to floor 2, which is obviously... Um, I got it from behind. <laughs> Boom, loot, mine. Ah! Let's use my bomb, because that was, uh... I'm too, I'm too close to having no health that it's... Oh! Alright, what is that? Oh, is that something to destroy? I thought it was actually a item box of some sort. Boom. I was just wondering if it was actually going to find me before I could actually hit it. Boom. Oh, shit, I missed him completely there. <laughs> like, every single shot of the laser grid went around him. So, let's see here. Now that's going to be a chain reaction. Watch this. Boom, 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 boom. Clears out the room. You don't get any bonus from that, though. Oh, right in the face. Ah, oh, right in the kisser. Oh, at least I've got a little bit of recovery there. That was worth it. Oh! I thought I was going to have plenty of opportunity to actually take those guys out. So... Oh! What I need to do is avoid getting hit by these electrical grids. Obviously. Um, they are super dangerous. They can pretty much take you out in an immediate move. I don't have the right key for that. So I'm just going to have to go around this longer way to... Uh, oh, there we go. Upgraded the rate of fire on my rifle. Boom. All dead and dusted. Working my way down. Working my way down. So you can see what the gameplay is like. This... this oh, yep. I mean, that was a little bit too close. The um, the combat doesn't really change much other than the fact that you're just going to be fighting wave after wave of bizarrely dangerous creatures and guards of varying levels of strength. Mostly ones that have keys will always be the stronger ones. And after uh, climbing a number of floors, uh, I should probably go straight up the floor, but I might as well take, see if I can get some kind of bonus. 
Whenever you go up a series number fours, there will be uh, set bosses that appear in different locations, which is um, pretty much your uh, your goal is to actually like work your way through each one of those bosses to unlock more content. In the um, like after a fifth floor, you have to fight a like a turret boss, a large turret boss that just I, I haven't beaten yet because I've only played through this for about half an hour. But the um, it unlocks more of the the facilities that are actually where your main character is. So I was able to then use the um, extras and the armory and all that kind of stuff and my trophies whenever I got as far as the fifth floor. So uh, twenty percent speed increase, thirty three percent health, uh, munitions, bone lacing, melee damage by fifty. Uh, all right, I might as well just take the money. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I'm not going to actually like make it to the top floor of this right now, so I might as well take the money boost, because I can use that to go and get a bunch of other stuff. Um, is there anything? Oh, there's my exit. So I'm essentially just going to do this until I can make it to the fourth, fifth floor. So if I make it that far, then at least then um, you guys might get to see one of the boss fights. Right. Oh, uh, the, that nearly surprised me. Like, see these floor mines? They are a pain in the whole... All right, let's get the... Yep, let's let those set themselves off. I'm going to stand back here. I uh, The first time I was playing through, I was doing so well, and I got to the, like, just on the end of the fourth floor, and then that motherfucking floor mines, I didn't even notice them, and just walked straight in and killed myself in one move. I was like, ah, oh. I had, like, so well leveled up. I was actually having, a, like, a really super good first run, but, uh, nah, I had to ruin it for myself. All right, there's more bonuses. Let's see what else we got. Uh, instant cash or improved melee damage by 200. Uh, ammo art improves the clip size of weapons. Oh, well, that makes it last longer. Ba -ba okay. Well, well, let's take the money again. We might, as well, we might as well just try and get rich. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. And, of course, another upgrade. Bam! Reload time's even faster. That's going to go well, actually. I probably think I actually probably should have taken the um, the larger... Uh, I thought that was going to actually blow through a wall. I should have taken the larger uh, ammo clip. Oh! Oh! Killed by Kamikaze Drone in level 3. Enemies killed, idiot. Seconds alive, 498. Neon hot tip. Kamikaze Drones can be dodged easy, but be careful with swarms. So yeah, that's uh, that's Neon Chrome. Obviously, I come back here to the main base, and I can go in and pay for bonuses. You know, because I got like 10,000 there, I've got a fair amount I can spend to level up my character so my looks better, my damage will be better, my health, and then each time you're incrementally getting a little bit better, will put you further up the mountain, really. Um, you can see the weapons I've unlocked. You can pay for uh, to set up your next character with that, with different weapons, and customize yourself to grab individual things. I don't think you can buy, you can't buy one shots yeah. So I can buy, spend 500 to get a 3,000 to 500 to get a 3,000 in a loop. And uh, trophies for completing certain things. You get uh, rewards for that. So yeah, the, this has been Neon Chrome. I, I might actually try and uh, exit out and see if I can get into the main... Like, I mean, there was like an intro bit that it showed in the open of the game. I wonder if it'll actually... Nah. It goes straight into this bit. Um, it did kind of do an intro that was actually... Kind of cool. I might throw that video up separately, uh, just with uh, me maybe not written over the top. But it was just kind of like a scroll that explains the world and shows a little bit more of the city before you even start in the game. But you've obviously seen the gameplay, so if you're interested, you should check it out. Uh, this is a bit of like I mean, Ten Ton did um, Xeno Raid, another game that I'm going to be doing as part of the series, and it's really obvious that this is uh, not a departure, but it's a very, very different style of game. Um, I've never been a massive roguelike kind of person. I've never been a huge fan of uh, games that erase your progress every single time you do so, and then you have to increment and get better. I mean, it's part and parcel of the whole get good uh, Dark Souls kind of thing. I'm glad to see it being a pretty predominant game style lately. Um, I mean, Rogue Legacy is a great game. I actually really enjoy the hell out of it. So, yeah. Uh, roguelike, top-down, twin-stick shooter with the, a whole kind of climb the mountain, climb the tower... Uh, game design to it. 
it's a good bit of fun and I could see a lot of time being sunk into this if you really, really want to get to the top. And I imagine it's like, it laps you, it laps you over and over again. You can even see the timer at the bottom. There's actually still counting how long I've actually been alive with this character, even though I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so I might just pause this and go back out to the main screen. So, guys, yeah, this has been Neon Chrome on Plastic of Skin for a cold open. Check it out. It's actually... I, I really enjoy this. I actually really do honestly enjoy Neon Chrome. That's not... This isn't because of, like, the developers giving me a key to try out the game. This is because I like the game style. I like the world that's in. Um, I like the challenge... Even if I'm a little bit pathetic at it, the idea of there being a, like playing co-op on this could be really a hell of a lot of fun. So I'd recommend checking it out. So uh, guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been um, Derm for Past Teacher Skin, checking out Neon Chrome. I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.